Yeah, so I'm Sabina, and I'm a PhD student at the University of California, Santa Cruz, and this is joint work with Lisa Gator there as well on disaggregating appliance level energy consumption and uh, a probabilistic framework. It's pretty similar, tackles a lot of the problems as the last talk we just saw. So I think we all know energy consumption is a large problem worldwide, especially in the U.S. with the highest per capita consumption in the world. And there are huge opportunities to reduce consumption using improved analytics. Smart meters are one such technology that offer a great opportunity to reduce consumption. One way that they do that is by providing two-way communication between utilities companies and end users. So we're now able to collect a lot more data than ever before possible. So multiple readings an hour or a day instead of once a month. And with this information, you could do things like give people itemized energy bills. So instead of being told how much your electricity costs you at the end of the month, you can see how much each of your appliances cost you. And this would allow you to prioritize. In this case, if you got this bill, you would see it really doesn't matter if you turn your lights on and off, maybe you should get a new refrigerator or an air conditioner. Or maybe you already turn your lights off and that's why this is good, but you know, uh, information is better. And you could also get targeted feedback, like uh, being told that your refrigerator uses 200 kilowatts a day and uh, energy efficient model uses a lot less would allow you to go out and buy a new refrigerator. And to get this kind of information, we need to take the aggregate power reading, which is what you get from a smart meter. It, it looks like this. And uh, we need to find out how much power is being used by individual appliances. And this process is called energy disaggregation or non-intrusive load monitor monitoring. And this is really a structured prediction task. That's because we have this relationship that the sum of all of the predictive power of the appliances which we predict to be on has to be less than or equal to the observed power. So we don't want to just predict whether a single appliance is on. We want all of the on appliances to observe this relationship. And we have other um, uh, structured relation um, information like appliance states have to persist and feasible sense sets have to make sense in context. And if you, if you look at this first relationship, you may think this is an optimization problem uh, where you could just solve that single objective function. Uh, for instance, here you could find two combinations of appliances, which makes sense. If you knew the total observed power was 16 kilowatts, you could you know, say it's one of these two, but then you couldn't go any farther. How, if all you knew was the total observed power, how could you determine which of these sets is more likely. And that's where context can help. We can use context such as if we knew it was a bright, hot, sunny day, that would make it more likely that the air conditioner is on, less likely that the lights are on, and we would vote in favor of this set. And to put all of this information together, we propose a probabilistic disaggregation framework. It can use contextual information like the sun situation. Uh, and it could also use that relationship I showed you earlier that the sum of the predictive power has to be less than or equal to the observed power. And it could also handle uh, a, lot, a lot more information. And to, uh, to encode our probabilistic disaggregation framework, we use probabilistic soft logic, which is an open source toolkit. It's ideal for structured prediction tasks such as ours. It's been successful at a number of them from drug interactions, drug to drug interactions to knowledge graph construction. It's ideal for collective inference and it allows us to combine constraints and context. I know this is pretty small, but uh, if you, if you want to ask me after, you know, I can point you to more information about uh, PSL. So probabilistic soft logic or PSL for disaggregation, how do we actually use it? We start by defining some target variables like uh, our appliances. So, you know, heater, microwave, refrigerator, is it on at a certain time? That's what we want to know. And then we can encode our information in uh, weighted rules. We don't have to know the weights to these rules. We can learn them from data. So one rule is that 
this is one example of a rule is just if the total energy is high, then the air conditioner is probably on because they use a lot of energy. But we could also encode dependencies between appliances, which is nice, and a lot of models don't let us do that. So uh, for instance, if we knew that the air conditioner is on, we could probably say that the heater is not on. Uh, and if we know the Xbox is on, the TV probably is on. Uh, and we could also use these context rules. Like an easy one is if it's hot out, the air conditioner is on. But more complicated ones are, you know, if a house is poorly insulated or it's constructed a, a long time ago, uh, the, and the temperature is cold, the heater is on. Uh, and we could go the other way too because we're doing collective inference. So we could say if the temperature is moderate and the heater is on, the insulation may be poor. So we can both learn about our contextual information and predict the appliance states at the same time. And in our experiments, we use the reference, ener reference energy disaggregation data set, RED. It's publicly available, so uh, that's an advantage. It has six homes. We looked at four, which is nice. Some data sets only have one. And for uh, training the model, for each home, we used half of the data. And then we validated and you know tuned parameters on a quarter. And we tested on the final uh, quarter. And we did that sequentially. And let's look at some preliminary results. Uh, this shows the uh, percent allocated to each appliance. And so we just looked at four appliances here, the refrigerator, dishwasher, microwave, and lighting. And you could see the aggregately, it's, it's doing pretty good, right? The, uh, the majority of the estimated energy is being assigned to the refrigerator and the lighting, which is true. And the dishwasher and microwave are getting a lot less. But uh, if we look at the actual classification results of on and off states, uh, it's not as nice. Um, so here we, we tried two models. We tried a model just using the appliance information, and then we added context. So in this case, we used temporal context. So uh, you know, if it's Monday in the morning, maybe you're using your toaster. And so hourly and day of week information. and. Interestingly, we could see that the temporal information helped with recall and not necessarily with accuracy or precision. So those are some next steps figuring out uh, why and when that information helped. And uh, it helped different appliances in different ways. So here uh, we look at the four appliances in the home and the F measure and the temporal information didn't really help or hurt most appliances except for the dishwasher. So this is the uh, reconstructed estimated energy uh, using the appliance model and then the temporal model. And both models are overestimating a lot, but using the temporal information helped us to overestimate less, uh, which I think makes sense because you know, dishwashers are used at regular times. They're not going to be used in the middle of the night, which will probably change with real-time pricing. But uh, now that's that's true. So, yeah, looking more at, at when and how this information helped is a next step. So, our contributions are that we introduced a probabilistic framework for disaggregation. It's flexible. It's powerful. It's scalable. We have a lot of next steps. The F measures weren't good in all of the cases, right? So we want to use more data, uh, more houses, more information, and any other suggestions anyone has would be great. Thank you.